To all the family of God in the global village who have the hope of kingdom of heaven, it is great to meet you all. I am the host of today's seminar, and I am from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Bartholome Tribe. My name is Jung Hoon. Testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. To everyone who is attending this Shincheonji online seminar, we truly welcome you. Through this seminar, the secret of kingdom of heaven that no one has known before is being passed down to the whole world. Many believers around the world are sending the messages of joy and gratitude for realizing the word. We thank you sincerely for your support from the many viewers. I hope today will be once again a time of grace to discover the kingdom of heaven through the word. Then before we listen to the word, let us gather our hearts and pray to Father God. Our thankful and gracious Father God, at this precious time, as you guided us to this precious word of life, we truly thank you. Inside your word, there is life, there is light, and we believe there is a power of creation. Also, as the word is God, through this precious word, let all of our inner person to become alive, and we can become the true believers that you can be pleased with. Let us have the faith, knowledge, and deed, experience the word of righteousness, eat the solid food, and grow to become the mature believers. With an eager, good and noble heart, we can listen to the word and realize, and we can become the fruitful, true children that you can be pleased with. As the whole world listen to this word, let us all become united as one. Let us all become one family. And Father God, please receive glory forever and ever. As we truly believe you'll be guiding us at this time, we believe and pray in the name of Jesus, who is our life. Amen. Testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Continuing from last time, Today, it will be Lesson 19 about figurative bridegroom, bride, widow, and orphan. In order to enter into heaven, what is the reality of the wedding banquet of heaven we must participate in? Also, what is the true meaning of the bridegroom, bride, widow, and orphan we will find out through the word. We will greet Bartholome Tribe instructor Kim Dong-hyun who will testify the word today. Greetings. To all the pastors, theology students, and saints all around the world who are carrying a life of faith with the hope of heaven, it is truly great to meet you all. I am Center Instructor Kim dong Hyun. I learned from the tribe leader our Bartholome tribe among the 12 tribes. Our tribe leader has learned from Chairman Lee Man Hee. All the pastors who are together at this time, we sincerely welcome you. And you have come well. Thank you for your attendance. Through this time, let us find out about the Word of God together. Today, it will be Lesson 19, The Figure of Bridegroom, Bride, Widow, and Orphan. Inside the Bible, there is also the physical Bridegroom, Bride, Widow, and Orphan. However, Using the physical characteristics, there's also the spiritual bridegroom, bride, widow, and orphan. The spiritual things using the physical or characteristics of the physical things, the secrets of kingdom of heaven we will find out together. As pastors would know very well as well, we all wait for Jesus. We wish to receive him as our bridegroom in our life of faith. Then why is Jesus expressed as a bridegroom? And do you know who is the bride of the bridegroom Jesus? After listening to the word today, I trust that you will realize who is the bridegroom and the bride, and when and where does the wedding banquet of Jesus take place, and how can we participate in it, and by that we can receive the bridegroom Jesus. Before the lecture, we will first find out about the true meaning of the parables. The bridegroom means spirit. The bride means flesh. The meaning of the figurative widow is a pastor who betrayed and the Holy Spirit has left. The meaning of the figurative orphan is the church members belonging to the pastor who betrayed. 
Then, how did we get these answers? Let's check with the Bible. First of all, about the bridegroom and the bride, we will find out. The reference verse, Hosea 2, 19-20, let us read together. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. As we see in Hosea 2, 19-20, God says, I will betroth you to me forever. Then, it means God becomes a bridegroom, and the person God referred as you will become the bride of God. This becomes a spiritual wedding between the spiritual bridegroom and the bride. Then, in order to find out about such spiritual bridegroom and the bride, let us find out about his physical characteristics first. The spiritual bridegroom and the bride in the Bible are using his physical characteristics. First of all, the bridegroom marries the bride and lives together in the same house. And the bridegroom gives a seed to the bride. The bride receives the seed, gives birth to children, and raises them. Then, the spiritual bridegroom is the entity that gives us spiritual seed. The figurative seed inside the Bible means the word. Then, the bridegroom is the entity that gives us seed, thus the word, therefore it is us spirit. Also, the spiritual bride that receives the word from the bridegroom will become the flesh, a person. As we see in Galatians 4 verse 19, Apostle Paul is figuratively described as a woman. Therefore, the meaning of the bride is a pastor who is in a physical body, a flesh. This pastor receives the word from the Spirit and through the seed of the word gives birth and raises children, thus the congregation members. Using these logic of the physical bridegroom and the bride, let us find out about the spiritual bridegroom. In the Old Testament prophecy of Hosea 2, 19-20, God says to the prophet Hosea, I will betroth you to me forever. So God is in the position of being married, so he'll be the bridegroom. Also, we can see in Jeremiah 31 verse 32, God says he is like a husband. Then, as God, who is the bridegroom, is marrying Hosea, Hosea will be in the position of the bride. Then would God really have married Hosea? In Hosea 12 verse 10, God says, he told parables through the prophets. This means even the prophet is also used in the parables. Therefore, as God said he will marry Hosea, when the prophecy of the Old Testament becomes fulfilled, it is promising that there will be one person that will appear who will be the bride that God will marry. Then, who will be this bride that God has chosen and become together with at the time of the first coming? In Matthew 3 verse 16, it says that the Spirit of God has descended on Jesus. The Spirit of God is the bridegroom, therefore Jesus whom God chose and was together with becomes the bride at the time of the first coming. As the bridegroom and the bride met, They'll be married, and they will live together in one house, isn't it? In John 10, verse 30, it says, Jesus and the Father are one. As the Spirit of God was together with Jesus, Jesus' body, his flesh, was like the house where the Spirit of God dwelt in. This is the marriage between the Spirit and flesh as they became one. Then, as a merry bridegroom gives a seed to the bride, God would also give the seed of the word to Jesus, right? In John 17, verse 8, it says that God has given the word to Jesus. This is a spiritual seed. It was a revealed word of the Old Testament. Then, God is the one who gives the seed, 
Thus the bridegroom, and Jesus is the one who receives the seed, therefore being in the position of the bride. Also, the disciples of Jesus, whom Jesus raised, become the children. To summarize, God who is in spirit at the time of the first coming is the bridegroom, Jesus who came in a body, in flesh, is a bride. But there is something we must think about here. The Israelites of the Old Testament were waiting for God to come as God promised that He will come in a swift cloud. However, God came in spirit. Then how could they meet God who they cannot see? They must find the flesh whom God, the bridegroom, is together with. Thus, they must find the bride. Then, how can we distinguish that this bride is a bride of God? Would God's bride be a very beautiful woman? Or would this person belong to a very famous denomination? Or graduate a very famous school? Jesus was not like that. It says, there was nothing to show in his appearance. He did not belong to any denomination either. How do we know that Jesus was the bride of God? We must only use the words of the Old Testament as a standard to check. However, the Israelites were not interested in the Old Testament prophecy and they only followed the law of Moses. And isn't that the reason why they did not recognize Jesus and even killed him on the cross. And therefore, they were not able to meet God, the bridegroom. Such things should never happen to us today, isn't it? In order to recognize the person that God has sent, we must also realize the word that God has promised. Then, let us find out about the spiritual wedding. As the Spirit of God marries with the spirit in a flesh and dwells in the body as a house to live together and raise the children of the spirit, this is a spiritual wedding, thus the marriage. Then, in order to find out about the bridegroom and the bride at the time of the second coming, let's read reference verse Matthew 22, 1-2. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. In Matthew 22, 1-2, the kingdom of heaven is described as a wedding banquet. And it says this is a parable. In these reference verses, who is the king that prepared the wedding banquet and who is the son getting married? The king that prepared the wedding banquet is God, and the son that is getting married is Jesus. As Jesus is getting married, he comes in the position of the bridegroom at the second coming, this time not the bride. Then Jesus who returns, it means he's returning in spirit. And in order to check this, let's look at the book of Revelation, which records the prophecy of the second coming. In Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus who returns, it says he sends the letters to the messengers of the seven churches. The one who sent the letters, as we see in Revelation 2 verse 18, it clearly states that it is Jesus, the Son of God. Also, in Revelation 2 29, it says, Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Therefore, Jesus is coming in spirit. Therefore, as Jesus returns is coming in spirit, Jesus comes as the bridegroom. Jesus returns in spirit, chooses a pastor on this earth, and works together. Then, this chosen pastor of Jesus will become the bride that Jesus is together with, isn't it? Then who would be this pastor? In Revelation 3 verse 12, As it is promised, the one who fights and overcomes the Satan Nicolaitans, who appeared at the churches of the seven golden lampstands in Revelation 2 and 3, to that one overcomes, it is promised, the God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven will be together with him. The one overcomes becomes a pastor chosen by Jesus. 
The one that Jesus is together with, therefore, becomes the bride of Jesus. Then the bride of Jesus, the one overcomes, will receive the seed from Jesus, isn't it? In Revelation 10, 8-11, there is an open book from heaven, the revealed word, and it is John who receives it. This open book, it was the book that was sealed in seven seals, the seal scroll in God's right hand. This is the word of the book of Revelation. Jesus takes this book of prophecy of Revelation and opens its seals. As this is a word that Jesus has opened, it will become the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus receives the seed of this word. Therefore, Jesus, who is the bridegroom in spirit, gives the seed of the revealed word to the bride John, who is the one overcomes. Then what will be the reason why Jesus gave the seed of the word to John. It is so that he can give birth and raise children with the word that he received. As we see in Revelation 22, verse 16, Jesus sends John, who ate the open book of the revealed word, to the churches as Jesus' messenger. So therefore, he can testify what he has seen and heard. This in Revelation 22:17, it says, Come and receive the free gift of the water of life from the Spirit and the Bride. Therefore, the one overcomes John, who is the messenger of Jesus, is being called the Bride. This messenger of Jesus gives the word that is the water of life to the churches and raises the people who came forward to the Word as the children of God. Then everyone, there is something we must think about here. Jesus, who we are waiting for in His second coming, He returns in spirit and therefore we cannot see Him. Then how can we meet Jesus when we cannot see Him? And that is the reason why we must find the bride of Jesus on this earth in order to meet the bridegroom Jesus. If we meet this bride, then we must also check if this is really the bride of Jesus, or is this person just simply making an arbitrary claim? If one is truly the bride of Jesus, then one must appear according to the promise of the New Testament, which is the book of Revelation. The bride of Jesus is not someone who teaches a word by researching on his own. He receives a revealed book according to Revelation 10 through Jesus and the angel, and he is the one who sees and hears the fulfillment of the book of Revelation at the place where it becomes fulfilled. Therefore, we must check if such things have happened from this pastor. If we do not know the word of Revelation, then we will not realize this bride, we will not recognize him, nor we will recognize Jesus who returns. This book of Revelation becomes the way and the teacher that guides us to the kingdom of heaven. So, we must know the word of this New Testament and seal them in our hearts. Until now, we saw the bridegroom and the bride that belong to God at the time of the first coming and the second coming. However, in order to meet them, we must go to the house of the wedding banquet to meet the bridegroom and the bride, isn't it? Now, when we are attending a wedding, let's say the time was at 12 p.m., but we forgot and we arrived at 5 p.m., then we cannot meet the bridegroom nor the bride. We're also going to miss out on the delicious food. Therefore, when we are going to the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven, we must accurately know the place and the time and sign of the wedding. Then, let us find out furthermore by reading reference verse, Revelation 19, 7-9. Let us rejoice and be glad and give in glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, Write, 
Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. In Revelation 19, 7-9, there is a wedding banquet of the Lamb at the time of the second coming. This wedding banquet does not happen at any time. In Revelation 19 verse 1, we can know that it happens after this. After this indicates that it happens after the events of Revelation 18. In Revelation, when the messengers of the seven churches that Jesus chose betray, there is a destroyer who belongs to Satan who captures them that appear. In Revelation 18, their flesh and spirit is judged. Then, as it says after this, Revelation 19 happens after Revelation 18. Revelation 19 is when the wedding banquet of the Lamb happens, which is the work of salvation. It happens after the events of the betrayal and destruction. Then at the wedding banquet of the Lamb, the events of betrayal and destruction could be testified, isn't it? This is spoken in Matthew 22 verse 4. As a sign of the house of the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven, there is my oxen and fattened cattle that is captured and prepared for the feast. God's oxen symbolize God's pastor. Why would God's pastor become captured, become judged? This is due to them breaking the covenant and betraying. Secondly, the fattened cattle have been captured. Then why is this cattle fat? Is it because it ate too much fodder? It is actually because it ate up God's saints who are like the sheep and destroyed them. Therefore, they are the destroyers. And it says, they too have been captured. Then at the wedding banquet house, we will be able to check the word of testimony that testifies the betrayers and destroyers. What is the certain sign of the wedding banquet of the Lamb, Jesus, it is to testify accurately about the betrayers and destroyers. Then where would be this house of the wedding banquet today? In Revelation 15, 2-5, those who saw the events of betrayal and destruction in Revelation 13 have been victorious and came out to gather at the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. This is a place where the witnesses who saw the events of betrayal and destruction are gathered Therefore, they will be able to accurately testify the events of betrayal and destruction. That is why this place is called Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. Then, this will be the house of the wedding banquet where there will be my oxen and fattened cattle. This house of the wedding banquet is referred in Revelation 14 verse 1 as Mount Zion. This Mount Zion is a place where the bridegroom Jesus has come to, therefore Mount Zion becomes the house of the wedding banquet. If the bridegroom is at this place, then the bride of Jesus, John, will also be at this place. Also, even the 144,000 who heard the word from John and become harvested and sealed will also be at this place. As we see in Revelation 7, it says the 144,000 are made up of the 12 tribes. It is to these 12 tribes that God and Jesus come and become one and live together. Therefore, this becomes the house of the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven. To summarize, not any church can simply become the wedding banquet house of the kingdom of heaven at the second coming of the Lord. The real wedding banquet house is where the bridegroom Jesus is at and the bride the one overcomes is at, and the place where the twelve tribes are at. The reality of this place is Shincheonji, Church of Jesus, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. This becomes a promised house of the wedding banquet of the Lamb. If we go and wait at the place that is not the wedding banquet house of the kingdom of heaven, then we won't be able to meet the bridegroom. Then, if it is not this place, we will not be able to meet God nor Jesus. 
Therefore, in order for us to receive our beloved bridegroom Jesus, we must go to the house of the wedding banquet that is promised in the New Testament. However, even if we want to go to the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven, not everyone can simply go there. There is a condition for those who are qualified to participate in the wedding banquet. In Matthew 22, it says, Even when you come to the wedding banquet house of the kingdom of heaven, if you don't wear the wedding clothes, you'll be thrown out. The wedding clothes refers to the righteous acts of the saints. Therefore, we must keep the word and have the righteous acts. Also, in Matthew 25, there are those who are waiting for Jesus. They have the lamp, but they did not prepare the oil, and eventually, they could not receive Jesus. Then, in order to receive Jesus, there is a lamp and the oil that is needed. What is this lamp and the oil? The lamp is a word of prophecy. The oil is a word of the testimony by the witness that testifies the fulfillment of the word of prophecy. Only when we prepare them, we can receive the bridegroom. Let us prepare them properly. I truly pray in the name of the Lord that we can prepare them and be the people of the kingdom of heaven. We must participate in the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven, but there is a place that we should never go to. This is the wedding banquet of Satan. If we go to this place, eventually we'll be judged. Then in order to know about the wedding banquet of the devil, let's find out about the bridegroom and the bride of the devil. Let's read Revelation 18 verse 23. The light of a lamb will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Your merchants were the world's greatest men. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. Yes, you have read well. As we read in the Bible, there is the bridegroom and the bride that belong to God, but we can see there is also the bridegroom and the bride that belong to Satan. As there is a bridegroom and a bride that belong to Satan, this will be the house of the wedding banquet of the devil. Where is this place? Let us first find out according to the Bible, starting from the time of the first coming. In Matthew 23, verse 33, Jesus called the Pharisees and the teachers of the law as snakes. In Revelation 20, verse 2, Snake, the serpent, is Satan the devil. This Satan the devil was together with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law at the first coming. The spirit of Satan, the devil, is a bridegroom, and this spirit is together with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, therefore they become the bride. The bridegroom, the devil, is together with them, so therefore it gives its own seed to them, so that they give birth and raise the children of the devil. As we see in John 8 verse 44, that devil, the bridegroom, gives lies. That lie given by the devil is a false truth, which is the seed of Satan. The devil, the bridegroom, works through the Pharisees and the teachers of the law as his bride. It gives them lies, and we can now realize that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who received those lies, made the Israelites as the children of the devil. This was a wedding banquet of the devil at the time of the first coming. When the whole world of Judaism married with Satan, how can one find the bride of God? This is only possible by the discerning through the word, which is the seed given by God's bride. At the time of the first coming, Jesus, who is the bride of God, testified the revealed word. It was testifying the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. Only when one receives this word, one can become the children of God enter the kingdom of heaven by finding this place that testifies the Old Testament prophecies and its physical fulfillment. On the other hand, if one receives false truth of the devil, one would have married the devil and received judgment. Then in today's time, where will be the wedding banquet of the devil at the second coming we should never go to? In Revelation 18 verse 23, there's a bridegroom and the bride of Babylon. 
Babylon is the home for demons, and the bridegroom is the evil spirit, and we can realize the bride is a false pastor. In Revelation 18, verse 2 to 3, it says, All nations were fallen because of them. Then, who would be these bridegroom and the bride that belong to Satan? In Revelation 17, 1 to 5, there is a prostitute. This prostitute holds the wine of adultery. It says, with this wine of adultery, all nations were fallen. The wine of adultery is the false truth of Satan. It is a seed of Satan. What is a prostitute? Inside the Bible, the figurative woman is a pastor. This pastor did not receive the seed from the original husband, God, but actually received the seed from the devil. Therefore, it is not a true pastor, but a false pastor. And the abominations that she has given birth to are the congregation members that belong to this false pastor. Everyone, at the time of the second coming, it says all nations are fallen because of the wine of adultery. Then inside of this all nation that we are living in, then we must also think about what kind of wedding banquet I am in at this time. Revelation is telling us about the two kinds of wedding banquet. We must check with the word of Revelation and realize what kind of wedding banquet I am participating in. This is only possible by discerning with the seed of the word given by the bride of the wedding banquet house. It is not the bride of Satan that gives Satan's false truth that we must find, but we must find the one overcomes, who is the bride of Jesus, who gives the revealed word. I pray in the name of the Lord that we can all participate in the wedding banquet of the kingdom of heaven. Next, we will look at the widow and orphan. First of all, let's find out about the true meaning of the figurative widow and orphan. Widow is a pastor who betrayed that the Spirit has left. Orphan is a church member belonging to the pastor who betrayed. In order to find this out according to the Bible, first of all, let us read Lamentations 5 verse 3. We have become orphans and fatherless. Our mothers like widows. In Lamentations 5 verse 3, as we read, it says, We have become orphans and fatherless. The mothers have become widows, so they are in a position that the bridegroom, the husband, has left. In the Bible, there is a physical widow and orphans. However, there is also the spiritual widow and orphan, which uses the same physical characteristics. What is the figure of widow and orphan? Let's find out according to the Bible. First of all, let's look at its physical characteristics. The widow refers to a woman that the husband has left. The orphan refers to a child who lost a parent. Then why would the spiritual widow and orphan lost their husband and parent? In Jeremiah 31 verse 32, it says that God was like a husband to the Israelites. But God's Spirit had no choice but to leave them. Then what would be the reason? This is because Israel broke the covenant that God gave. And not only this, in Jeremiah 3 verse 1, it says that Israel has become another man's wife. After leaving the original husband God, who did they marry? In Jeremiah 3 verse 8, this is called adultery. Therefore, this is a spiritual adultery. It is not receiving the seed of God, but receiving the seed of Satan, the devil, which is the false truth, and following the bridegroom, the spirit of Satan. Therefore, all the pastors and church members of Israel betrayed and became corrupt. This in Jeremiah 3 verse 14 is called as a faithless people, faithless sons, who are the church members that belong to the pastor who betrayed. Through this, we can define the widow and orphan. Widow is a pastor who betrayed that the Spirit has left. Orphan is a church member belonging to the pastor who betrayed. 
We will summarize the key points and complete. Bridegroom means the spirit. Bride means the flesh. Figurative widow is a pastor who betrayed that the spirit has left. Orphan is a church member belonging to the pastor who betrayed. We will make the conclusion of today's word and complete. God has created men. The reason why God created men is so that God can dwell together with His people. However, due to the sin of Adam, God could no longer be together with people and had to leave this world. In order for God to be back with the people and be together again, God made a covenant to the people of Israel through Moses. God was like a husband to them, and God guided them. However, they broke the covenant just like Adam. God left these people, and Israel became widow and orphan. Therefore God made a promise in Jeremiah 31 to make a new covenant. The content of the new covenant is the promise that there will be the spiritual wedding banquet at the second coming of the Lord, which God has prepared for His Son Jesus. The place where God and the Kingdom of Heaven returns to is where Jesus' wedding banquet takes place. The bridegroom of the wedding banquet of Revelation 19 is Jesus, and the bride is a messenger that Jesus sent for the churches today, who is the promised pastor of the New Testament. It says this pastor, together with the Spirit, gives a free gift of the water of life to whoever that is thirsty. Let us find the bride of the Lamb according to the prophecy of the New Covenant Revelation, Listen well to the word of testimony and believe. I pray in the name of the Lord that we can all be those who can participate in the wedding banquet of the Kingdom of Heaven. Next session will be Lesson 20, The War Between Jerusalem and Babylon. There will be the best instructor who will be teaching. I hope we can all attend and receive much grace. We are all one within the Lord. Within that meaning, we will shout out strongly, we are one and complete. We are one. We are one. Thank you for listening well until the end. Let us all pray together and complete. Father God, who is full of love and full of grace, with your great grace and love, we sincerely give you thanks and glory. Father God, you have built this world. However, you have to leave because of the sin of Adam. And in order for Father God to come and meet us again, you send Jesus to this earth, and we believe and we follow it. Father, Jesus returns at the second coming, becomes a bridegroom, and it is promised that He will come to meet us. So please allow us to participate in this wedding banquet by turning on the light of the lamp of the Word. Fill the oil, prepare the wedding clothes, so we can all be those who can meet Father God and Jesus. Father, at this time, all the pastors, theology students, and congregation members who are listening to this word, please allow them realization. And Lord, please guide us so that we can all become one within the word. So by that, we can all become one. And we can all become the people of the kingdom of heaven within you. The world is going through pain because of the coronavirus. Please allow the coronavirus to cease as soon as possible and guide us so that we can live together with you on this earth together with you. As we give thanks and glory for everything, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our life. Amen. Does the war happen only at the time of the second coming? Then, does this word apply only to the people who are living in the physical Jerusalem? It says, the name Babylon is written on the forehead and it is a mystery. It is a very weird beast, isn't it? Then, we're going to find out the reality of this war of the second coming.
Did you receive much grace through the word? Next session will be Lesson 20. The figurative war between Jerusalem and Babylon. Let us all attend, realize the word, and become the family of God who enter into the kingdom of heaven together. If you have any other questions about the word of Shincheonji, or if you have any curiosities, please call the phone numbers you see on the screen. We'll be happy to guide you kindly. Finally, as we give all thanks and glory to Father God who allowed the word today, we will do the Lord's Prayer and complete all the order of today's event. Let us do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With this, we will complete the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meaning, Shincheonji Online Seminar. Thank you so much for attending today.